But what I want to move to next is a way to really dress a basic tray like this up by the addition of edge trim. We've made a couple of dies that are ideally suited for that. I laid out what I think is going to be exactly enough of the trim extrusion. I know from measuring this tray, this is, a, uh, this is about five or six inches wide, so is this of course, and this is about 15 inches long. So this is 30 plus 12, something like 42. It, it adds up fast. You don't realize how much extrusion you really need until you start putting these together. We're talking about almost four feet of extrusion. So I made sure that as I was going with the extruder and, and pulling out the pieces, that I had some good long lengths that I could then cut and, and work with so I wouldn't run short. I try to put the trim on in, in sort of a simple fashion, just four pieces cut. I'm not trying to do exact fitting here. I happen to like the look of trim pieces laid on. It gives it a really beautiful sort of a spontaneous effect that takes glaze well. If though you want to do it a little bit more meticulously where you cut and fit, you can get some excellent results that way. You just have to work with your extrusions, that is your trim pieces, and measure them out carefully. I've learned from experience and trying it both ways that I like to lay the end pieces uh, on first and then uh, add the long pieces. This is still pretty fresh. I'm going to locally wet it and it's not so much for the sake of adhesion as it is to help the trim pieces, the, the notch, I'll show you in a second, to, the notch in the trim pieces slide down onto that end easier. So it's, it's a lubricant more than anything else at this juncture and I'm doing exactly the same thing with this one. Now I'm ready to apply a piece of the trim. i use my cutter. This is the, the piece that I made and it has a really nice groove down the middle that's just about the size, exactly what I need here. I'm going to pinch it so it, it can be a little bit extra. So I want to lay this on and I like the look of this this way. You notice that I didn't have to do much of anything to that, that channel. If your extrusion, your trim extrusion is set out for a while and it's firmed up, feel free to lay in a little bit of slip in that trough underneath the, uh, the trim piece. And now that I've laid it on there, I'm just pinching this really carefully to help them bind. As soft as that is, it immediately attached. I'll do this with the other one too quickly. I want to get the two end pieces in place quick. Okay, it's exactly the same thing as before, but what's going to happen is when I lay the extrusion on, it's going to come up and rest on top of this, so it's going to climb up. And I'm going to force that in so that I know that I get a good seal all along. And what I like to do is I know some of the, some of the slip is going to run down inside the tray. It doesn't matter a bit. Most importantly, I want to make sure I have it evenly across the complete, the complete edge. Start at the middle, seat it just like that. You can see I have a ways to go, but I'm going to work from the center outward. Somewhat balanced. I'll catch this, push it into place there. I like that one. Catch this, push it into place here. I'm getting, I'm getting exactly the effect I want, but I had to be careful about how I place the extrusion so that it, it's plenty flexible and I'm going to get a chance to come back and make sure I have it lined, aligned correctly relative to the side of the tray. And I want about the same amount of overhang as here and here so I can give it the same kind of finished look. Once again, that fell right into place. The, the really fun part is coming is when I get to finish these corners. You have to check it. It looks level all the way across. I, you have to be careful too is that this die as you've seen is it has beads across the top. If I push too hard I'm going to distort the beaded effect so I need to push but not damage the shape I'm looking for. That's what when the piece is fired and it's glazed this is where the glaze is going to really show off. It's going to look really pretty. Okay looks like I have a good seal. I have, I have all four of my pieces in place and I'm, and I'm liking the results I'm getting and I have to do some strategic pinching to get it exactly the way I want. You get it, now's the time to be bold and, and pinch. I like these because they're essentially free form. I get to fuss over them any way you want, but as, as spontaneous as it seems, you also want to know that you got it constructed correctly. And I don't want to have any light shown through my tray. I want it to be a, a complete tray edge to edge. That looks nice. At this point, you can get a better perspective if I hold it up. It has what I want here. It has some opportunity to finish here, 
But technically speaking, what you want to make sure you do is you're going to work on the corners to make them look really nice. But technically speaking, you want to make sure that this trim all the way around is grasping the, that tray edge. You can't afford to have that gapping or not seated. Later on when the piece is firmed up, you'll be able to flip it over in hand or lay it onto a towel or something where you're not going to risk damaging the top surface and double check the undersides to make sure that's fully closed. But for now, we'll leave it like this. One of the most important things to do is through controlled drying, make to make sure that your tray dries as flat as you possibly can. Now, part of a good tray is in the choice of clay. Some clays tend to be better suited for this kind of work. That is large, flat areas. Some clays are such that they have, they're better suited for for this kind of firing, they're less inclined to warp. This clay is a medium grog stoneware. It happens to be a, a clay that I know is uh, particularly good in that regard. It served me well before. You like to make sure that just by your own pressure with your hand that you have the, the tray well placed. And then with the advice of a friend who's been doing the same sort of thing for years, I came up with these uh, ballasts. And what it's simply made of is, this is a uh, Ziploc sandwich bag into which I poured some playground sand until it was almost full, but I could still zip it shut and clutch it like this. And then I wrapped it in cheesecloth and I used a uh, zip tie or a tie wrap to keep it closed. And uh, they simply lay at the ends and at the middle. If you feel like you need more, make more. They're really easy to make. Once you have uh, play sand, you can make as many as you need for something like that. Now, this I'm gonna take, I'm gonna wrap it in plastic with those in place and I'll check on it tomorrow. If it looks like it needs more, I can add more, but for the time being, I think this is gonna do a good job of getting this tray off to a good start in terms of drying flat, so give that a try.